Where's the bird? Where's, I hear it, I hear it. Where's the bird? There we go, wait. Okay. Okay, now. This is super hard to read. Hi, I'm Philip Rosedale, creator of Second Life and co-founder of High Fidelity, here for Ask an Expert, which is the show where we take your questions from the Twitterverse about the topics we cover at SU. I think I hear a tweet. Here we go, thank you. All right, at SVM118 asks, what will happen when people spend more time in virtual worlds than the real world? A lot of people get worried about virtual worlds uh, and I think that's where this question comes from, taking our time away from the real world. But actually, I think as virtual worlds become bigger and more complex than the real world, it'll almost be the opposite. We'll worry if people are spending too much time locked into just the place where they live in the real world, where they might only have a limited set of friends, or they might have less diversity around them than they can find in the virtual world. So as virtual worlds uh, replicate everything we can do in the real world, which they will, I think we're going to see them as a place where, like school, we want to make sure we actually spend enough time in. As a matter of fact, there have been a lot of studies, even before VR, that suggest that people we see every day, uh, because we've learned about them online, people we've, we've come to know online, are people that we're far less likely to engage in conflict or wars with. The more VR becomes a literal world that you can walk around in, a, a real physical world like this one that feels the same, the less likely we're all going to be to fight with each other. There it is, there it is, another tweet. Thank you. At Croft Andy asks, how much will it cost to preserve your virtual brain on a future virtual grid? Will there be virtual jobs? Well, there's two questions there. Moving our brains into the virtual world kind of confronts a series of tough questions about biology and about the way the, the human brain is designed that are pretty challenging ones. I personally think that we're going to see uh, very, very human AIs that are able to talk to us and have intelligence initially comparable to ours and then greater than ours, I think we're going to see that happen a lot sooner than we see this ability to sort of uh, upload yourself completely uh, into a virtual environment. I think it's a good question for the future, but it's one that I don't know how easy it's going to be to do and I, I don't have as much confidence that it'll be straightforward as some of the other crazy things that are happening right now. As to the question of virtual jobs, Totally. There are, there are already many virtual jobs. Uh, the virtual world of Second Life has somewhere between a half a billion and a billion dollars a year in uh, people buying and selling things from each other, and many of those things are things that are people's full-time jobs. There are many, many people in Second Life today, for example, who make their real-world living uh, from building things in the virtual world and selling it to other people in there. So virtual jobs are going to be a dominant part of our future. I would uh, go so far as to say they'll probably be uh, the biggest place where we work, bigger than the real world. I think I hear another tweet. Gotcha this time. All right, Andrew Light uh, says, Second Life's choppy on mid-range systems. How do you balance performance uh, and expensive in-game environments? Well, you know, the one thing about Second Life is, and, you know, as the, as the creator and founder of it, I can say this, we started early. Um, Second Life was uh, barely able to work on the computers we had at the time. I started Second Life right when broadband had come around and there was a little bit of 3D capability on computers. But because computers double in their power and so does network bandwidth every two years approximately, uh, it's only a matter of waiting. And it's 15 years later now than when I originally started Second Life. And what that means is that we have computers that are about 50 or more times faster than we did uh, when we started. In fact, High Fidelity, uh, my new company, uh, here we're trying to build virtual worlds that uh, take advantage of all the speed we have on modern PCs and all the speed of the network as well as its latency, its point-to-point -point timing today. And that's allowing us already to create um, experiences that are extraordinarily lifelike and compelling. For example, we've built the whole inside of an animal cell. Uh, that works, that actually has moving parts, you know, inside it. And teachers can take their students actually into that space on a sort of a magic school bus that drives around in it and uh, lets you look at the cell from the inside out. And that's an example of what we can do with VR that uh, is just going to be world changing and uh, is only just becoming possible with the technology. All right, here's, here's one more tweet. 
All right, parabolicarc.com just asks why. And I think that's a great question. Well, I think virtual worlds and generally technology uh, is, is our aspiration and potential as humans. I mean, we are building and doing everything we can do. We've done all those things with the world up till now. You know, the kind of world around us has been the world on the surface of the earth. But why wouldn't we create a kind of a new space, a virtual world where we can go inside that space, I guess, rather than going into outer space on spaceships? If that space is uh, as big you as know. the real world, which it will be, and thousands of times larger in another That's decade, good, which yeah. it will be, why wouldn't we uh, explore it in the same way we've explored and built and changed everything else around us? So that's why. That's what keeps me getting up in the morning and working on what I'm working on. Thank you for watching Ask an Expert. Check back next week for a new episode, and don't forget to click here to subscribe. I, think you hear. I hear a tweet. I hear a tweet. Let's grab it. Oh, grab it. Oh, grab it. <laughs>